okay. Um, okay. I always forget. Okay, here we go. Oh, sorry. So you, you reached out to some volunteer coordinators. I, yeah, I reached out to about 15 volunteers that said they were interested in um, coordinating, like the project management types. And so I'm going to check the, uh, our, our email to see, um, the Corona Y email to see if I got any responses. Um, and I guess it, again, just kind of goes back to our, uh, the ongoing discussion that we're having about um, generally how, how we're onboarding and matching our volunteers to our needs. Um, another one that I'm going to try to work on um, is I know Maya, it came up on our, on our channel, but that Maya, um, who's the head of risk, I believe, she, she really needs natural language processing uh, help and some other help. So um, I know I have a ton of natural language processing volunteers. So I was going to uh, just now, I was going to give, give her some of those contacts as I had given to um, the vaccine group last week. So, and this is all kind of like, you know, it, it's okay when we only have, you know, whatever, 800 volunteers. And even, even now I'm, I'm behind, obviously. And, you know, the, some of the things that you had talked about in terms of automating and sort of automating, but also the personal touch. Um, I believe that we should just get very clear on that soon so that we can we can focus, you know, on, on, on getting our volunteers, you know, showing them what, what is needed. Uh, yes, yes, that, that makes sense. So, um, I, I just wasn't sure how, um, Marie Puerabe, I think her name is, the one that, that has this light touch, uh, the idea of the light touch for the project manager coordinator, team coordinator. I didn't know, you know, whether she was the one or, or do we need, like, I mean, just for example, for project coordinator, for project coordinator manager, mm -hmm. you know, that, that that's one thing, but it's almost like we need we need just the whole volunteer onboarding oversight and and that whole thing so i mean i don't even, i don't know it's just yes okay um i agree that we do need some onboarding oversight um so it's not clear to me based on our discussion if anybody is officially in that role right now um it seems to me that at one point daniel was doing that uh have you been doing that I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been trying to look through who's been coming in, you know, and trying to get those categories together. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's very unwieldy to do it sort of manually. Um, I'm happy to keep plugging away at it. But then the question is, once I get, say once I get 20 or 50 NLP not, you know, people, or we get 20 graphics people, you know, then, then what do we do? Then do we, do we have, you know, individual calls with them? Do we match make them with the coordinator of the teams and have them talk to say three teams that need that and then they pick or that kind of thing. That's a, a good question. I, I understand this is a pretty new process and I don't, does Maya's team have an officially appointed coordinator yet? I don't think so. I mean, I've just been, I've been communicating with her. Um, hopefully I'm going to get to talk to her this week. Um, so I've just been talking to her and Ar Archer was saying to me that the team lead is, he was saying that's not really the repository for us to be sending these volunteers to. Um, so there's that too. Like I, I'd like to send oh. Maya 
these NLP volunteers because she's asked now several times for them. So I don't think it'll hurt, but I understand that that's not, you know, that's not what we want to like generally be doing. The team lead is doing other things. Okay, this timing is perfect. Uh, oh, I didn't notice that Arthur was joining. Thanks for pinging okay. me, Arthur. Uh, hello? Hello. Yeah. hello. <laughs> I'm just jumping in for five minutes. Well, I'm it's just uh, Frangis and me today, and Frangis had some very good questions to which I have zero answers at this moment, but maybe you do. Do you have them in the quick list? Well, we were just, we were just talking again about uh, onboarding the volunteers and uh you know what what is you know pre preparing for the fact that there's there's a large volume and what's the balance between us getting something automated which is great because it'll help funnel people to a certain extent and then also the personal touch of speaking with them and, uh, you know, that matchmaking process. Mm -hmm. So what's the and, question? Well, uh, the question is that right now, for example, um, if, if I get a good response from the volunteer coordinators, there's 15 that I've reached out to. That are that have said they're interested in coordinating. Oh wow! Um, what nice. what will I do with them? So what do you have to do? You have to provide, and by you, I mean obviously you're not alone to create that, but you have to provide them with a flow chart, an explanation of this is where you start your work, and this is where you end your work, and each of the stages has some guidance. So the stage where a person introduces themselves in the Slack channel, obviously the guidance that you have to provide is that, hey, there are relevant channels to every person's background. So start from there. You know, if we can at least kick off that piece so that Daniel, me, Anton don't have to do that, that's already huge. So have them, have them, they will, I understand that, will encourage them if my email was basically if you're still interested I, I i did have them to contact me through the corona y email so that i can i, I wanted to just keep track of it also you know i i know that's not going to be scalable but um and then encourage them to sign up on slack and explore the channels yeah. So, Frankie, are you are you aware of the onboarding documents there in the drive that I was just showing you before? Yes. Yes. I've seen. Okay. And are you pointing? Are you making sure that new people have seen the uh, orientation guide? That came with their welcome email, right? Is that true, Archer? I don't even know anymore. I think that's. I'm not sure, and that's actually a good point. I like, believe it's no one... attached to the welcome. We haven't updated the email in like a week and <laughs> our time frame that's a lot. So let me, let me just let me just quickly check that. I'm pretty sure it was attached to the email. If you ask me what's in that email, I'll tell you I don't know. And what what prompts this email to be sent by the way? The Is form this... submission on the site. Oh, welcome. Okay. Yeah, okay. So welcome. Um if you're interested in joining us, join the Slack channel. Um, and then it gave the overview of the four teams, and then there's the attachment. Yes, that has the orientation. That's an attachment. Yes. And well, then the attachment is it's because it's Google uh, link, so it's okay. automatically it's attached. Yeah, and it's dynamic. Mm -hmm. So when the okay, great. So. Okay, so I'll have to jump out. I just want to say that start small like if you can at least improve like this onboarding email or the the part with uh, people uh, catching people in the general uh, slack introduction and pointing them to relevant channels that's already huge impact okay so just getting getting them to the channels not trying to hold their hand 
and match and introducing whom they should speak because each channel has uh, that coordinator ideal right did you say i'm sorry not to do that or to do that no i'm saying each channel has responsible communicator right oh i see so tell them let's say there is an nlp guy coming in yeah you have to tell him hey we need you in these channels or if there is no need for nlp people you can go to nlp stack and you can talk to x person to get onboarded right so that connector routes them to relevant person and for right now it could be the team leader but as we progress it should be not team leader it should be some coordinator within the team Okay, so if there's not a relevant channel, can you just repeat how that would work? Well, ideally there is relevant channel to like some extent. Like if there is none, like let's say that there is a person that joins and says, I can help you with everything, I can do everything. Like obviously you can't really help that person. Like there is zero information and Maybe the coordinator can actually go to their LinkedIn and assess and do some extra work to figure that out. But I would say don't focus on those. Okay. Because we have plenty of things where we got like 10 people doing NLP and we haven't really routed them properly. With the exception of me jumping in or Daniel jumping in or someone else jumping in. Okay. So All right, guys. Oh, I have to okay. jump into another call. But okay. If you can upload the recording, I assume you're recording, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. If you can upload that, that will be helpful. Okay, thanks. And uh, Shannon, you have access to YouTube channel, right? Um, I imagine through one of the yeah. accounts. Yeah, if not, just ping me and I'll let you know. All right. Uh, am I, wait, is that, where, is that where I'm supposed to upload this? Ideally. Oh, uh, um, okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which one it is. Is it the team account? I think team account should have it. If not, I'll add your personal Gmail and he should be able to access it. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks. So, um, oh, can you see the, the email that I pulled up, the welcome email? Yes. So, that this is making me think that we should change this welcome email. Maybe, um, yes. Um, what, did, what did you have in mind? Well, Okay, so it says, welcome to the team. If you're interested in joining us or in coordinating your efforts with ours, okay, please join the Slack channel. Yeah, boom, that's right up there. Mm -hmm. Once there, introduce yourself in general. Okay, that's that channel. That's good. You can then get familiar with our channels. There are a lot of them and see where you might like to plug in. I feel like that is a little too soft. I think that we could do better with the language on that. Because this isn't like a might want to plug in. We want to really be, you know, you should go look at those and see what's a great fit for you or something like that, you know? I don't know, that, that to me is not much of a call to action. Not familiar with Slack? No problem. You can learn about it here. If you don't um, want to work with Slack, you can email us at the address. Okay. And then team goals, those are important. Um, and then it talks about the Trello cards. And Ooh. This team roster is out of date. Oh, yeah, no, this is my, I mean, this is mine. So this was from several weeks ago. So, but I don't know if nobody's touched it, then that's an issue. Um, I'm not even sure where to edit this actually. Um, because I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with how the form was coded. Yeah. Okay. But, but I actually, I have some thoughts about that too, because uh, it would be nice if we could streamline membership adding now that we're getting our G Suite worked out. I wonder if that should be the next thing. Um, 
Uh, okay, so this, yeah, the team roster is probably out of date and should probably be removed. Um, the, I would like to see that orientation document that is linked at the bottom. I would like to see that closer to the top because most of this information is in there. That's true. Um, and I, I feel like I would like the, the thing about the channels, I would like it to be more of like, that's their call to action. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in to general, tell who I am, and then I'm, I'm really gonna look at the ch channels and plug in, you know, or, or send an email with, with the chance, you know, with, although, although if you don't go, the problem is if you don't get on Slack, then you don't see the, the, the channels. Yes, I, I actually am surprised that he's being as flexible about this issue of Slack as he is, but I mean, that's, I get that because I don't use Facebook, so I kind of appreciate it when people are flexible with me. Um, yeah, I don't use Facebook either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually really but glad that this, that wasn't the only way to get into this. Was I know, I know. Uh, um, I'm just looking at the, the welcome orientation just to kind of, yeah, watch this video, join Slack. I'm just seeing if, if, if maybe in here there's more on, because, because see, then that's, then that's something that then for those people, that's a blocker, as Daniel likes to say, because then if you're, if, if I'm communicating on email, then I don't know where to go. I'm a scientist, but I don't know what the channels are because I'm not on Slack. Right? Um, yeah, and actually, um, in this orientation document, is there any way that, that points directly to the, no, because it's all still Slack. I was going to say to the team leads and how you can reach out to them specifically. Um, right. He's dropping yeah. a few names. He's not dropping all the names seemingly here that I would have dropped. Um, where where do you see the names? Every time he says at somebody. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. And now I don't even know if these these people are is Steve Godfrey still doing project management and now we changed that. So this is this is uh now uh should probably relook at this. Um, maybe this is, I, I don't know, I mean, maybe this is even a, a little bit too much and a little, it's a little unwieldy. You kind of want a boom, boom, boom type of thing when you want to get people on. I was thinking that too. This, this document has taken various forms. Um, and at one point it was shorter than this and then it sort of got bigger again. Um, I mean, I think it's very important, I mean, I think to have the top four teams, the tasks, because that's what our mission is and all of that. But I'm just wondering if there's, um, Can we move back up to the contents, perhaps? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if there's a survey. I'm wondering if there's a survey format we could use that would solve both our, both our, you know, automating, the automating question of uh, like the keywords and also the, and also getting people like pushing people to the right to the right links or to the right places. Like if somebody answers the survey in a certain way, they will get, you know, an email or they, they, they will get instructions on what to do. Like if, if they say, I'm using Slack, then it'll say they'll get instructions, you know, go to these channels, whereas if they, if they choose I'm not use, I'm using email, then they would get different instructions. Then we could also collect their expertise 
and then we could then tell them where to go. That's an interesting idea. Like a, like a, that way the survey is, is doing the work for us. Then we don't, we don't have to take the data and, you know, massage it to match its needs and all that, right? But then we're also pushing information back to the person as they're, even as they're responding, or at the end of the survey, they'll get their little sheet that says, okay, you know, you're using email, you do this, this, and this. Hmm. And these are your expertises, um, uh, you know, or, or, well, no, no, they'll, 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 based on their expertises, they will have their instructions. Hmm. Okay, that seems to me like it would take a separate thought process, for instance, figuring it out how to instruct people who opt out of Slack. Yeah. Um, at this point, I'm not even sure how supportable that is just because there's so much that is presumed to be communicated through Slack. At least that's been my personal observation. Um, yeah, it's difficult to say that that would that would be maintainable. Well, although if I had to say, I mean, I, I sort of like your idea about kind of, you know, giving responses that somehow send you to the right contacts. Those, of course, are contacts who, who will change over time. Um, and if we were going to if we were going to set up a system like that, I think we would want to basically create a data source for who the contact people are and update that accordingly as people change roles. Um, so, for instance, if, if the tasks change after the first competition is over and we get new task leaders, for instance, then that's important information to, to update. And then that would probably go out in such an, such an email as you're describing. Um, so, I, I kind of need to go myself. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone else is going to join us today, but I have written down a couple of actions required here. Um, so we've got an action required, um, assigned to nobody yet. Establish who is the onboarding coordinator, basically somebody to triage all the incoming people. Um, because it seems like at the moment people are just, uh, subbing in when possible, as opposed to there's someone whose ded dedicated job is to do that. Um, then, uh, I have an AR to fit, to consider the question of, um, how should the onboarder funnel the, um, the new recruits into work? Should they um, basically draft a list of qualified people and send it to each team coordinator? Should they send it to the, the project lead directly? Should they reach out to people directly? Not clear yet. I do kind of like your sending a list to a team coordinator idea. I think ideally that's what would happen and we're still obviously working on it. Um, so I have an action required to, to figure this out. Um, action required, uh, edit the welcome email. And what I have written down as suggestions are remove the outdated team roster, um, update the language that refers to plugging yourself in, update um, the location of the, the orientation document within the email, and probably also up update the orientation document in general, but that's a bigger ask right now. Um, and I think I, I will post these actions required with the recording in the minutes. And I think all of these things that are, are things that require more brainstorming, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah um, well, the clear, the, there was some clarity with what Archer said about if we can get them into the channels, then there are responsible people manning the channels. Right. And I didn't, I didn't realize that. So that's a, that helps me because that I didn't, I didn't put that piece together. So that I think is, that's a baby step there. Gotcha. Um, so does that may, mean that Daniel is responsible for general? Or are you? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that as a question. Who is responsible for general? Um, because that person really is the onboarding person. And actually, maybe there should be 
and then within the onboarding responsibility, there there might need to be, you know, tech. we might have to break it down, you know, like data, technology data, scientific, technical, uh, non-technical, something and uh, you know non-technical management and then I don't know whatever I'm just thinking that because because there's a lot of there's a lot of roles yes you know. um absolutely I, I your survey idea I think is interesting and I'm just uh, it's sort of shaking around my head if you if you and do you want to draft up a um, a more specific proposal of how you would see that working because it's an interesting idea yeah then we could brainstorm it more okay so maybe maybe some of the survey like survey monkey or some of those companies either they have it or maybe they could make something up for us and it would be a good pilot Indeed, I, I will basically offer, I, I, you probably can tell this already from having looked at the join form that was added to the website, but what that does is it actually populates a spreadsheet. I don't know if you've seen it yet. It is privately maintained at this point, but it, it, it populates a spreadsheet for the responses automatically go into a spreadsheet that is very similar to the original team roster. And that spreadsheet is something we can, we can um, analyze. So for instance, we can search for all of the people who said NLP. So it's like a survey, it's just that not all of the responses were pre, uh, predetermined, I guess. Yeah. Um, and can so I, in, in a I, sense, what I, you're describing is already happening, but there's just what, no automated action as a result. What, where is that? And can I have access to that? Sure. I'm sure you would be permitted. Yes. Well, I, I guess I'm not sure. I think that it's admin access and, and we'll, let's oh. ask Arthur. And what is it called? Uh, I, I'm not, it, it, I, I don't remember. I have okay. to go look through my, my Slack messages it's to find the, it. It's the spreadsheet behind the join now. Yes. I feel, yeah, that, that'll identify it. Um, so that's an AR for me. Um, okay. So a, AR, uh, Frangis up with the join spreadsheet. And okay. somewhere we've also archived in private the old team roster and they should probably be um, integrated so that we don't lose information we already have. Uh, and that hasn't been done yet. So that might be another AR for Shannon. Um, uh, consolidate, consolidate team roster. Um, so today, actually, I consolidated our um, team Google group list, which had been uh, had which was originally was two Google group lists, and and actually it still is. But I, I intend to delete the first one as soon as we know that we're able to use the second one, uh, which has been a little difficult because G Suite has had some transitions this year and it's made our features more restricted and it's been more difficult to get them lifted. So this morning I was actually on a call with uh, G Suite support and hopefully they've done something manual to help override our limitations and hopefully we should know by tomorrow if that action was affected, I mean, was, was effective. And then, uh, so then, it, so it, it's nice, G Suite is nice because um, so um, the, the the join form spreadsheet has only existed since the join form went live, but the the G Suite list you can export. So it's complete. It's as complete as it can be, except actually the people on the join form that I haven't added yet. And um, you can always get you can get a general sense of of how many people we have on that list by exporting that list, and you can get all of their contact info. Um, but now it's being privately maintained on the admin account. Um, but with the, with, again, with the join form, that's where you can also get the additional information about people's self-identified skill set. So anyway, I've got myself an action item to um, see if we can get you access to that spreadsheet. And um, that, would, that would basically mean you're, you're currently acting in the role of um, talent sourcing and, right. and ta task matcher. So assuming that that's a role that you intend to take part in, at least for now, I think that's justification for providing you access to that private document. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and I so, assume that Archer will agree. Okay. And with the G Suite now, 
uh, just circling back to our, the beginning of our, what you helped me with at the beginning. Now the document that you are talking about, the team roster or whatever, is that in, would that be under the shared with me in, in that Google Drive then? Or no, the, wow. not, not the new one. The new, the new one um, is private and has probably been shared with no one. Um, or if it has, I don't know who, who it's been shared with yet. Oh, okay. Um, it used, the team roster used to be public, but then we, what we realized was happening is we basically put everyone's personal information in a public, publicly viewable spot. Right. And right. I think okay. that anyone who understands how Google Drive works probably also understands that that's what happened, but yeah. it's also a dodgy thing to do. So we're, that's oh, why the original team roster was removed from the public view and then this new join form was created. So we actually we have two team rosters. The one, okay. the one, yes, the one that used to be public and then the one that is now being populated by the, the join form uh, and, is, and, they're, and now both of them are private. So I think basically um, somebody needs to merge them. Probably I can do that. And then we'll have a complete list of, of people and their skills that'll just be accessible to a select group that has reason to have access to it. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we can do things like use just like spreadsheet filtering to get ourselves a list of it, people who say NLP, for instance. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll, yeah, I'll spend, I'll spend, uh, I'll do an outline of this, this idea. Um, that right. I mentioned, and then we'll just see if it if it goes anywhere. Excellent. Okay. Um, and then we can maybe bring that up at tomorrow's meeting, and maybe more of our folks will be there to weigh in. Okay. Okay. Well, I think I better hop off the meeting. Um, and uh, I appreciate that you attended and you had all this stuff to say. So um, thanks very much, and I'll I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Great. Take okay. care. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks.